Welcome to another episode of Moments with Mike as we continue our devotional study in the book of 1 Thessalonians. Today we enter into chapter 3, and I'll be focusing on the first five verses of that chapter. But for us to really understand what's going on in those verses, it really does require us to take a step back into chapter 2 and remind ourselves of what is happening. In verse 17, Paul writes, But since we were torn away from you, brothers, for a short time, in person, not in heart, we endeavored the more eagerly and with great desire to see you face to face. Paul felt as if he had been orphaned from this church. He had spent just a short period of time, three weeks, with them, and the church is established. And as we see many times in Paul's ministry, a work is started and opposition to that work begins. In verse 18 of chapter 2, Paul introduces the idea that it was Satan himself who was attempting to keep Paul from reuniting with the church in Thessalonica. And he ends that chapter in verses 19 and 20, affirming how great his love was for them and that he saw them as his hope and his joy. And so Paul being separated from the church in verse 1 of chapter 3 says that when we could bear it no longer, he sent Timothy, in verse 2, to strengthen and to establish them in their faith. I want to stay there just for a minute. Remember, this is a fledgling church. They had only had the instructive teaching of Paul for a very, very short period of time. And so while they may not have known as much as some of the other congregations in surrounding cities, they were a church that wanted to know what God was saying. And so in verse 2, when we see that Timothy is sent to establish them in the faith, it really has the idea of instructing them more thoroughly in what the teachings of the Old Testament and the teachings of Christ were, so that they would be established in their faith and able to withstand the affliction that they were going to face, and indeed were facing already. And so it's important for us to see in these first five verses that Paul was not just a passionate preacher, but Paul was a passionate lover of people. The old Puritan preacher Joseph Parker once wrote, to love to preach is one thing, to love those to whom you preach is another. We should have no doubt that Paul, who was passionate in the proclamation of the gospel and cutting things straight, making things clear from the scriptures and being intent on building up the faith of the saints through that teaching. We should have no doubt in our mind that Paul was equally as passionate about his love for God and his love for people. But the other thing about this particular text, verses three, four, and five, that really I've been sitting with is this idea of the acknowledgement that for us now, as it were for the Thessalonians then, to understand the truth of the gospel is to also understand that there will be seasons of affliction. Throughout Paul's ministry, he encountered opposition. Sometime this week, it would probably be a good idea for you to take a look at 2 Corinthians 4, verses 8 through 10. And even more so, 2 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 28, when Paul details some of the afflictions that he personally went through himself. And in fact, in verse 3 of Thessalonians 3, he uses the collective pronoun we. We are destined. We were determined. We were appointed for these seasons of affliction. In fact, when Paul was saved, as recounted for us in Acts chapter 9, it says in verse 16, Paul was told from the very moment that he came to a place of faith and hope in Jesus Christ, that part of the call of God upon his life was that he would suffer for the sake of the gospel. That suffering now is extended to the church in Thessalonica. And so we see in verse three, that the reason Paul sent Timothy was to build up people in their faith and to encourage them to walk alongside them as they went through these seasons of persecution, these afflictions that were so sharp for them. Paul sent Timothy for that reason. But it reminds me of a real, real important message for us. We love to preach the gospel. 
It's the good news that God loves us and sent his son for us to live for us and to die for us, to live for us and that he left us an example to follow and to die for us that by his blood, we might have the forgiveness of our sins. But it's clearly very, very true in the teachings of the scripture that affliction and persecution and struggle comes with this thing that we call the Christian life. I think it is not good for us to only preach that part of the gospel message, which speaks to that of forgiveness and speaks to that about the empowerment of the spirit and speaks to that about having a purpose and a passion larger than ourselves. I think we also have to be fair and share with others that when we come to a place of faith in Christ, that persecution and affliction await. It's important for us to be faithful and honest in the proclamation of truth. I remember when I was much younger, I read Cervantes' wonderful work, Don Quixote. And in that work, we read these lines, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. For us to be knowing that persecution and affliction will come to us helps us to prepare for that by hiding the word of God in our heart, by building accountability systems into our life, of having people, if you will, along for the journey. Because I have found that when I go through times of affliction, seasons of distress, that hiding God's word in my heart is a wonderful antidote for whatever the enemy would want to do to derail me or to cause my, my testimony to be thwarted. But it's good to have people along to support and to lift up your arms like Aaron and Hur did to Moses in the Old Testament to walk this journey of faith out with us, especially in seasons of affliction. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and in 1 Peter chapter 4, Peter tells his readers, don't be surprised by these fiery afflictions that come upon you. Again, for us to lead people in the teaching of God's word to a place of faith requires us, yes, to talk about the wonderful blessings of salvation, but make them alert to the fact that temptation will come. Persecution will arise and afflictions often will dog our heels. We'll continue that in our next episode of Moments with Mike.